now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Demon of the Night. There are two ways of looking at it. Either one believes that they died accidentally from natural causes. Or else we have to admit that there was something in the darkness waiting for them. Waiting for anyone who would be unsuspecting enough to walk alone at night. I leave it up to you. Decide for yourself whether Raphael Sebastian was a maniacal killer. Or whether he was what so many people have called him. A creature of the darkness spawned in the mind of evil in the darkness of night. Running at all fours to leap upon his unsuspecting victim. He came to our town on the midnight train. Why I happened to be there at the station, I attribute to restlessness. Sheriff Craig was there, too. Who's that? Ken Parker, Sheriff. What are you doing down here? I couldn't sleep. She's right on time. Yeah. Why did you come down here? I don't know. Figured I might as well walk down to the station and see who might be getting off the midnight train. Then you knew he was coming tonight. Who was coming? Sebastian. You mean the man who brought the old Claymore place? That's right. No, I didn't know. I'm kind of anxious to see you. It was funny the way he bought the place, wasn't it? Yeah. Calling up at night when the real estate office was shut down. Having old Matt Ryerson describe the place to him over the phone. Then mailing a check from him. My name. Now, this is Ken Parker. I'm pleased to meet you. How do you do? Did you come down here to see me? Yes and no. Uh, what do you mean by that? I was kind of interested in you. I mean, the way you bought the old Glamour place and everything. I wanted to see the man who bought it over the telephone. And besides, I couldn't sleep. Who told you I was coming? Old Matt Ryerson, the real estate agent. And you, Mr. Parker, why did you come down? I don't know, Mr. Sebastian. I guess I couldn't sleep either. Well, it's, it's rather late. You should not... Oh, here he comes. I must talk to him about being late. It's been very pleasant meeting you, gentlemen. I hope that we may meet again quite soon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sebastian. I imagine we'll be seeing you around. I imagine you will, Sheriff. Good night. Good night. I got a funny feeling about that man, Ken. How do you mean? I can't explain it. His eyes look sort of uh, funny. And his hands. Did you notice his hands? Yes, I did. Notice how they were just covered with hair? Thick and furry, just like an animal. I was a little surprised that the sheriff had fastened upon the same things I had. There was only one light on the deserted station platform, but Raphael Sebastian had stopped directly beneath it while he waited for his car. There was something strange about his eyes. But the thing which had set an unaccountable tremor of fear through me was his hands. They were small hands, graceful and well-formed. They were covered with a thick coating of hair, and as Craig had said, they did remind one of the fur of an animal. Perhaps I should mention that I own the paper in this small town we live in. It was always news to us to note the departures and arrivals in the town. So I knew that Saturday, when the Gazette came out, it would have an item about Sebastian's arrival. Both Sheriff Craig and I lived in the outskirts of the town. So I drove him back to his house and stopped in for a cup of coffee. 
I hope you don't mind it being a little strong. That's the way I like it, Sheriff. Sue always makes it so weak I can't stand to drink the stuff. Tastes like dirty dishwater. Cream and sugar? No, no, I like it flat. <laughs> Appreciate the flavor, huh? Mm, so do I. Paper getting along all right? Mm-hmm. You've been doing a good job since your father died, Ken. I didn't... Listen. Yeah. I hear it. Must be a dog. Ain't no dog. No dog ever howls like that. And what is it? Haven't been any of those critters anywhere near here in a long time. You mean that's a wolf? That's what it is. Shot a lot of them when I was young. Probably out looking for food. Maybe. There it is again. And it gives you the creeps, don't it? A little. Sounds like a big one. Maybe we'd better go up. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like a window breaking. Isn't any mistake in that sound? That was a scream. Come on! Right. The only other house out here is Widow Brady's. Uh, scream must have come from there, then. Don't see any lights on. That definitely came from that house. I don't know it. Miss Brady! Miss Brady! Maybe the door is unlocked. No, no, she always leaves it locked. Mrs. Brady! Listen, that sounds like an animal. Come on, we're going to break this door open. You ready? Yeah. All right, stand together. Let's do it again. She's sleeping on the first floor bedroom. Just follow me. This is right, eh? The light's right here. Something, some animal must have been in here. Look at her. It's what a horrible way to die. We'll return to the tale of the Demon of the Night in just a moment. Now to the Hall of Fantasy and the tale of The Demon of the Night. I had stopped at Sheriff Craig's house for a late cup of coffee. We had just returned from the station and our first meeting with Rossi and Sebastian. The scream had echoed in the night. We raced outside to see what was wrong. What we found was death. That wolf again. You think that wolf killed Mrs. Brady? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? What are you going to do? That animal's got to be killed. That's what I'm going to do. Craig went out by himself that night in an attempt to track the animal. But though the tracks were quite clear outside the broken window, it was impossible to follow them. By morning, a light rain had sprung up, and all traces of the tracks disappeared. I was at the paper the following day, getting everything ready to go to press. Ken. Ken! Oh, Alice, I'm sorry, <laughs> darling. I didn't see you come in. I'm beginning to feel jealous of that typewriter. What are you writing now? Well, the story of what happened last night. It's already all over the town. Yes, I know. But they'll read about it just the same. Matt Ryerson told me that... An animal had killed Mrs. Brady. That's right. He said something about a big wolf. Is that true? As far as Craig and I know. Well, they'd better catch the animal and kill it, Ken. The town's getting panicky. Well, Craig was going to trail it, but when the rain came this morning, there wasn't any trail to follow. Oh, it's not raining now. Well, don't you see, Alice? The rain washed cracks away. You two talking over your marriage plan? No, sir. We were talking about what happened last night. I thought you might be different. Old town's talking about that. Anything new, Sheriff? Not nah, a thing. Town's getting all head up about it. I don't like it. Anything I can do for you, Sheriff? Yeah, hey, Ken, I'm going out to see that Sebastian fella. Want to come along? Of course. Sebastian? Came in last night on the midnight train. Well, what are you going out to see him for? Uh, just to see him, that's all. Oh. Sheriff 
Craig and I went out to his car, got in and drove out to the old Glamour mansion. It was a few miles out of town, well back from the highway. We turned into the gravel road that led to the house. It'll be pretty nice to see this old place fixed up. Certainly gone to ruin since Claymore died. It will be nice to see it fixed up, but I... But what? Yeah, I don't know. This killing's got me down. Don't worry, Craig. You'll get the wolf. I hope so. Well, we're here. Now, let's go. All right. With all that rain this morning, it certainly turned into a nice day. Kind of a day I like to go fishing. Yeah, me too. I guess that servant of his must have come out early to get the house in order. He was the knocker kid. Good afternoon, Sheriff. Afternoon, Mr. Sebastian. Are you here on business? A little. Uh, won't you come in, then? Thanks. You certainly cleaned it up in here. My servant, Carlos, was here for some time. Sit down if you will, huh? Now, what can I do for you? Last night... When you were driving out here, did you uh, see or hear anything? I don't understand. Like a wolf. A wolf. That's right. No, I didn't. Why do you ask? We had a killing in town last night. You mean someone was murdered? Yes. By a wolf. At least that's what we think it is. Uh, what happened? Was someone out walking? No, the wolf broke through a window to enter the house. Oh, that sounds impossible to believe. Yeah, I know. I just want to warn you, living way out here the way you do, to uh, make sure you have plenty of protection. Huh. Do not worry, Sheriff. I am able to protect myself. Did the uh, animal leave any trail? Yes, he did. Yeah, but I couldn't follow it in the dark. And when it was light enough to see, a storm started and washed out the tracks. Oh, that's too bad. Well, you keep your eyes open, Mr. Sebastian. I will, Sheriff. Come on, Ken, let's go. We went outside and got into the car and started back to town. We'd driven for about five minutes before I realized that something was different about Sebastian. I think Sheriff Craig realized it at the same time. Sheriff? What? I just thought of something. So did I. You notice his hands? Yeah. That's what I was thinking, too. There was no hair on them at all. At first, I thought we must have been mistaken the night before, but then I wasn't so sure. Both Sheriff Craig and I had seen his hands the night before. Both of us couldn't be mistaken. We didn't have much time for further speculation, however. I had to get back to the paper. I was behind in my work, and I had to make up for lost time. About 8 o'clock that evening, Alice came down to help me. We worked steadily until almost 11. You are first? Yeah. What time is it? Oh, almost 11. Well, I'd better get you home. Finish up in the morning. Well, I can go home alone if you want to stay here, Ken. No, Alice, I don't want you out in the streets now. Not that there's any chance of that animal returning. Let's go. I've never seen the town look so deserted at 11 o'clock. You're all afraid. Oh, look, there's your afraid. The sheriff. Ah, uh, hello, Ken. I see you're wearing two guns, here. Yeah? That's right. Not going to take any chances. You walking Alice home, Ken? Yes. Well, I might as well go along with you. Everybody must be staying inside. No, not everybody, Sheriff. Look up there. Isn't that Matt Ryerson? I can't see too well. We need more street lights in this town. Mister. Yes, I heard it. I don't like this. No, no, it's running away now. I missed him, doggone it. Matt. Matt, are you all right? A <laughs> wolf with a human face. <laughs> He's dead. Did you... Did you hear what he said, Ken? He said a wolf with a human face. 
are listening to the tale of the demon of the night on this week's journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Demon of the Night. Sheriff Craig and I were walking out his home. It was after 11 and the streets were deserted and dark. Old Matt Ryerson lay on the ground where he had fallen after the attack. Before our eyes, he died. Did you hear what he said, Ken? He said a, a wolf with a human face. I heard what he said. That thing out there in the darkness, whatever it is, it's got to be killed. What do you mean, Sheriff? Whatever it is. Just what I said. You think it's something besides a wolf? Well, I don't know for sure. What are we going to do with him? There's nothing much we can do. Isn't a pretty sight, is it? I guess I'll call Simmons. Then we'll drop you off, Alice. And then what? You'll come along, Ken. Then you and I'll follow the trail of that killer. It's a good thing that it did rain. The ground's pretty soft. Makes the trail easier to follow. We've been out for almost three hours. I know. I wonder if that critter knows what's following it. Aren't you endowing it with the faculty of reason? Maybe. No animal is capable of reasoning. That's where you're making a mistake. All animals can reason a little, and I know one that can reason a lot. There's only one animal. You mean a man. That's right, a man. A man that can take on the form of a wolf. That's not possible. You should listen to my wife talk. She can tell you some stories that will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. A man that assumes the form of a wolf, that's only legend, folk belief. You figure it your way. I'll figure it mine. That critter's getting closer to us. You sure? Of course I am. We aren't tracking it anymore. It's tracking us. Maybe you've been wondering why I'm carrying two guns tonight. Well, here, yeah, one of them is for you. Thanks. Uh, we better stop. You, uh, notice which way we've been traveling? North. That's right. And what lies north of the town? Nothing. Except the old Claymore place. That's the way we've been heading. We aren't more than a half a mile away from it. You're really serious in believing that we're dealing with a werewolf. Dead serious. Listen. I heard something. Keep your eyes open. I can't see anything. Don't talk. Just shoot. Just look. Out. There it is. I see it. You hit it. Uh, we might as well stop. No sense shooting at the shadows. It's too far away by now. Did you notice which way we're going? North. Yeah, just about a half a mile towards the old Glamour place. You and me, we're going there too. We're going to pay Mr. Sebastian a visit. your light again. Uh, yeah, that's right. There's the blood spot again. You got any doubts now where the trail ends? It's only 25 feet away from us. Look, the paw prints end here. That's right. And you see the bare footprints of a man. Now, do you believe me? I guess so. Now, when we get inside, you let me do most of the talking. All right. Here's the knocker. Right. I wonder who'll answer the door, Sebastian or his servant. We don't have long to find out. I think someone's coming. Yes? Oh, it's it's you, Sheriff Craig. And Mr. Parker, what uh, what can I do for you, huh? We'd like to come in and talk a spell. Well, it's it's rather late. What I have to say won't keep. Well, then, come in. How come your servant didn't open the door? Oh, uh, why, he... He left my employ. I guess I must have missed him when he took the train. Yes, you must have. We can talk here. I see you have a bandage on your hand. Did huh? you hurt it some way? I, I cut it. Now, what do you want to talk to me about? About two killings. And I think maybe a third. 
what do you mean? The old woman that was killed last night, Widow Brady, you didn't know her. And Matt Ryerson, he was killed tonight. And your servant, when did he die? You, you're insane. No, we're not, Mr. Sebastian. First time I looked at your hands, I knew there was something wrong about you. They're covered with hair, just like the hair of a wolf. But they're only covered at night, not in the daytime. You, you don't know what you're talking about. And you didn't cut your hands, Sebastian. We shot you when you tried to attack you, us tonight. You have no proof, Craig. You, <laughs> you're accusing me of being, being a shapeshifter, a werewolf. You, you don't expect people to believe you, do you? I don't care what they believe. We know what you are. We're going to see that you can't kill anyone else. You, you don't think that you can stop me, do you, Craig? Huh? Look at his hands, Sheriff. <laughs> yes, yes, look at me, Craig. Wait, wait, wait. We shall see who you are. You will tell. Now, use your gun and do me. making a mistake about that. No. Sebastian is dead. I'll never forget what I saw. Right before our eyes, he changed. First into an animal, and then as he was dying. Back into a man. You'd better forget it if you know what's wise. People aren't going to believe you now that he's dead. If he was alive and the murders went on, and then they'd believe you. But not now. Officially, I killed Sebastian in the line of duty for the murder of three people. Unofficially, and you and I know the truth, I killed a wolf who was the demon of the night. Oh! 